Hold on. It is being recorded. Yeah, I have okay. All right. So today we are going to do a CMA, a market analysis, or what we've been calling it is, um, an equity analysis with some of our sellers. Because, you know, you don't want to sound like every other agent market analysis, you know, CMA, CMA, you know. So we're calling it an equity analysis right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> better, don't it? Yeah. Yes. I know, right? Especially right now. <laughs> no, especially in this market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and we are just going to follow right along. Okay. All right. So this is the seller lead sheet that I that I use for my business that I give you guys in the coaching um, program. So anytime I get a seller lead or I plan on doing a market or equity analysis, I like to have this sheet because it's everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, seller information, new address, all that kind of stuff, but this is important, address. So what's the address that we're working on today? Uh, 5285 Mirror Lake Drive, coming 30028. Okay, so I'm going to ask you questions um, basically as if you were like a seller lead, okay? So okay. Say, That's the address. Great. And how many bedrooms and bathrooms is it? Six and four. Yeah. Okay. And um, is this like on a basement? Two yes. Okay. Unfinished basement. Two-story basement. Unfinished. Okay, so two-story on an unfinished basement. Yes. Okay. And is there current? Do you have a HOA in your community? A com yeah. Yes. How much is your HOA? Six hundred a year. Okay. What all does that include? Um, pool maintenance. Um, maintenance of like the, I guess the common areas. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, <laughs> That's about it, I believe. Yeah, I street, it should street be lights. more than that. Street lights. Street lights, yeah. Street yeah, lights. Cool, cool, cool. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah, we just transferred um, ownership or uh, control of the uh, HOA over to the to the neighborhood. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that could go either way. <laughs> I know. So far, so good. So far, so good, though, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. As long as you have good people in place, you know. Yeah. Together. Um, okay. And then is there a current mortgage payoff or any liens or anything like that of that you know on the property? Just the mortgage. Just the mortgage. Approximately what would that payoff be? Um three, 360, I think. Okay. All righty. And if you guys were real sellers, I'd be like, so we're we're looking to get this property sold. Why are you looking to sell it? Um, we're trying to move closer to family. Closer to family. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So in when in coaching, I always talk about going three deep, right? Why three times? So mm -hmm. if, if you were to say, okay, we want to be closer to family, I'd be like, okay, that's great. Where is family? So we have family in South Carolina and we have family in Alabama. Alabama. My parents live in Alabama. They literally just left. Yeah. <laughs> Where about? Uh, they live in Calera. That sounds familiar. Where is that in relation to Montgomery? Um, don't know, but I usually go in twenty and I go four fifty nine to fifty nine. It's like by Pella, Monticello. That's why it's familiar. Driving uh, up and down eighty five and to uh, sixty five to uh to when I was going to school. Yeah. Yep. So they live over there. Okay. And so why is it important to be closer to family? Well, my mom is in South Carolina and she's 84 years old. Okay. And so we want to be able to help her, you know, help as much as we can, be a little closer so we can get to her a little bit faster. I gotcha. Okay. So we'll be moving closer to the South Carolina side is where we would like to be. Okay. So South Carolina side, closer to, to my Not in South Carolina now. But We're not going all the way back. Just that way. Yeah, that way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And um, so where where is she at in South Carolina? She lives in Graniteville. Graniteville. Which is in Aiken County. So, you know, oh. North Augusta. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. where I'm from. 
oh okay all yeah. right he's got an office over in augusta uh, okay okay yeah yeah okay good all right so when talking to the seller you know you can't just really stop at want to be closer to family you know you got to dig deeper onto that why mm -hmm. and that motivation because later on we're going to tap back into that mm -hmm. and it's time to sell and maybe it ain't look you know just, it, it right. ain't happen we got to tap back into motivation because you know right like, right mom okay <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right and so the next thing that i would do is set an appointment Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much for all this information. Uh, I'm super excited to help you get closer to South Carolina, get closer to mom. Now, when's a good day? What's easiest for us uh, to, to meet? Maybe 15, 20 minutes, I can take a look at the property and we can kind of go over what that equity analysis would look like. Is weekdays or weekends easier? Which is easier for you? Late, Either late evenings or weekends. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's say six o'clock on Tuesday. Perfect. Let's do it. Perfect. Okay, great. So the most important part of this sheet is set the appointment. <laughs> okay, right. I, you don't have to know nothing about nothing. Just set the appointment. Motivation, set the appointment. I'm going to pull the tax records to mm -hmm. fit bedroom, square footage, and all that. But sometimes I, oh, not well, all the time I like to verify because the tax records ain't always right. So you may have bought it, added some stuff to it, converted a garage or something like that. So we just want to make sure it matches up. So now that I've had a conversation with you, I'm going to go down to these next steps, put you into command, okay? And make sure I put in the address, put in your email address. I, you know, I would have got all that up here. Mm -hmm. Right. Put you into command. So then the next thing I'm going to do is pull up the tax record. So I'm going to open up another window. Now in Georgia, we have two listing services, Georgia MLS and mm -hmm. FMLS. They like right. to make it nice and confusing. Okay. It should just be one, but there's two. Yeah. Uh, and, and they both essentially do the same thing. The thing about Georgia MLS is um, I, I just like Georgia MLS. Some people like FMLS. Georgia MLS is $20 a month. And, you know, typically it was like, 20 and under or you know pretty much all metro Atlanta everybody used Georgia MLS but FMLS was more like north side people use it north side um but all KW use both so it's kind of you know evening out but there's always That's what I was gonna say when I um because my first job out of college was office manager at my uncle's broker brokerage which is here in Atlanta so I remember the the Georgia MLS versus the FMLS and I like the Georgia MLS better Me too. also Yes. Me too. Yeah, it seemed to give you more. It just seems to me it seemed to give more. And it is definitely good um, to learn both, but you yeah. have one that's your favorite. And Georgia yeah. MLS is my favorite. So we're going to okay. pull the tax record from Georgia MLS. So you're going to go to CRS Tax Suite. So CRS is uh, where you'll be able to pull the tax record. You could put up to four counties. So if you're not sure what county the address in, you could put mm -hmm. four different counties and, you know, guesstimate. Okay. Um, so let's see, 285 here. So once you start typing the address, it'll pull it up. So you just, okay. if you see it, just click on it. And I would typically print two copies, one okay. for myself, and I'm going to staple it to my seller lead sheet and mm -hmm. then another copy for my client in my listing packet. So they have an idea of what the public record says. Okay. So I would look for a subdivision. Look like there's no subdivision. Square feet. So we got 3964. So I'm going to put that in. Um, I know it's single family detached. So right now I'm just filling in the other missing information that's on this sheet. Right. Um, I'm always looking to see if they filed homestead exemption because if they have not, then you know I want to at least mention it to them for the next place. Like, please make sure you know you're you're taking advantage of that. Okay. And then also um, let me scroll down. So 2018 is year built, single family detached. And a quarter of an acre. 
Okay. And this other stuff like district and ward and block and lot, you'll need for your listing agreement. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. If it's completely blank, then I'll go check FMLS. Okay, okay. gotcha. Um, but as long as I got most of it. Now, is Whisper mm -hmm. Point the name of the subdivision? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so sometimes if it, it now typically it would have been all the way up here where it says subdivision. Mm -hmm. But, you know, tax workers ain't perfect. So yeah. typically down here in the legal description, so this is saying lot 230, phase two, uh, Whisper Point is what it's looking like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, I've been doing construction for like 12 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Whisper Point. And that's important because I'm going to be looking for comps in your area. Are you close to like a lake or a creek or something like that? There's a little. There's a creek, creek behind, our, behind house. our house. Okay, because I'm seeing this, the this all this extra stuff over here. So mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, there might be some water around there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all right. So we got the creek in the back. All right. So now that I pulled the tax record, the next thing I'm gonna do is go to. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, I got all the, the, the general information. So uh, now I'm going to put this disclaimer out there. Okay. This, there's no one way to do this. There's no one way to do this. Everybody has their own style and which way they like to do it. This is just how I like to do it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, this is just a guesstimate. I'm really looking for a range because I'm guessing if I haven't seen the house, I don't know if it looks like a model home or an episode of Hoarders. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, depending on what it looked like is going to depend on what what I'm. I just need a range. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so. This that's what we're going to do. So I do a four step process. My first step is I'm gonna Google your address. Okay. So fifty two and. I'm really looking for the zest. I'm looking for the zestimate. Oh, okay. And I know that you know Zillow is not always right. That's what I was gonna ask. How you know how? Because I was told you know that Zillow is not. You don't want to look at the prices on Zillow because they're well, I, not right. I don't think you shouldn't look at it because nine times out of ten, that mm -hmm. person googled their address and they saw it. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta know what they looking at, you gotcha. know. What I mean? But there's when we get to Georgia MLS in the CMA cloud, I'm gonna show you why I want to know this estimate because they okay. tell me how accurate the estimates have been. Have been. Gotcha. They, they could be on the money. They could be way low. They could be way high. You, mm -hmm. you don't know, but I just want to see what they see because guaranteed. When you get there, they're gonna say, "Well, I looked online and it's at my house for," <laughs> and this is nine times out of ten, this is estimate, okay? Right. So, on this same sheet, I'm gonna write estimate four ninety five six six three, and I'm gonna date it five twenty three, because estimates like to change and wiggle around. Right. So you know, I might be, you know, I might be doing this research today. But if I'm not seeing you till Tuesday, I might pull it up on Tuesday and see if it went up or down or changed in any way. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And just to give you a, an example about Zestimates, um, like one of my listings, the Zestimate said like 256 or 265 or something like that. We listed it at 300. The Zestimate changed to 300 that day. Wow. So at 307, the Zestimate changed to 307. So... In reality, real estate agents, when we list properties, we affect the Zestimate because, mm -hmm. because Zillow is just pulling all public record, everything. They, they're, they're not looking at condition. They're not mm -hmm. looking at, you know, they're, it's, it's not all the way, you know, right. as detailed as it should be to be accurate. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's off. So step one, I'm going to check the Zestimate, Okay. That one was actually close because there, there's that's the one I was telling you we looked and there a house actually sold in our neighborhood very similar house for like five ten yeah okay so mm -hmm. we're gonna pull up that comp and see it okay so next step step two is I'm gonna look at narrpr.com narrpr 
dot com. <laughs> That's a lot of R's. Mm -hmm. I know it. I know it. Okay. And so I'm going to put in the address. And see what they say. Okay, so it is saying, and I'm going to write this down with the date, 449-380, 449-380 with the date. And there's stars on it. So out of, a, out of five stars, how confident are they in the, that score, they're feeling really confident. It could go from 404 to 494. Like there's a, almost a $100,000 gap. So they're just yeah. kind of picking in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is just kind of just, this is just estimate guesstimates. This is giving me a rough idea mm -hmm. of what the, well, those, all those websites pull public information. This, they're mm -hmm. giving, this is kind of, I'm getting an idea of what's going on. So now I'm going to go into, FMLS. Step three. Okay. FMLS. Um, so in FMLS, I'm going to go into matrix. Because I just want to see if there's anything different than MLS. Because the last okay. place I'm going to do is MLS. And that's where I'm going to put my actual report together. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to search residential. It's single family detached. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put the address in here. And as I'm typing it, it should pop up. So you just click on the pop up. And I'm going to start off with a half a mile radius around the address. Okay. And then over here, I'm hitting active, active under contract, coming soon, pending. So basically, active, active under contract, coming soon. That's what's out there on the market. Pending, it's under contract, and mm -hmm. then closed, it's already closed. Okay. So right now we got 10 matches. That's good for me. So I'm gonna hit results and let's take a look. So I see it's all in the same subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And we have a range of bedrooms and bathrooms here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have one that's active one that's under contract and all these have closed. So that's your neighbor, 510. Yeah. Okay. Um, 390. Yeah, yeah. I'm also looking when it's closed. So some closed end of last year or, or like mid last year, end of last year. And then you, but you see the prices going up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2021, 2021, they're starting to go up, 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 right? Now we're a six four, so we got a yeah. six four. So if I was looking at this and you didn't tell me it was the, your neighbor at five ten, I would be looking for the six fours and then see this is four, four, three, four, five, five, five. So these two are the sixes. Okay. So I'm gonna take a look at the one that closed. Very nice. So before I look at all the pictures and stuff. I like to look at private remarks. I want to see, is it investor only? Is it, you know, what, like if there was any, you know, private information about the property or, you know, just, you never know what could be on it, right? Right. Um, so this is just typical stuff. So, uh, okay. Original list price was $465,900. They went under contract five days on the market, five days cash, cash. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Five ten, no closing costs. They got a hundred and nine percent. Um cash. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> they went under contract on 412, closed on 429. Wow. Great. Thanks. Man, that was good. <laughs> so look we got basement daylight now this is finished so let's mm -hmm. see, now let's see what the basement looking like though because if the basement is finished let me make this bigger 
that's not what I wanted to do. Um, okay, so it's nice, very nice. Looks like a model home, very nice. Yeah, it, it really does. Very nice, screened in porch, that's nice. That's what I want. That's nice. Oh, nice kitchen. I'm like, do they live there? <laughs> That's a good question. It is. <laughs> but you know what? My friend, yeah, look at the pantry. They live there. My friend Cheryl, her house is just like that, too. She's a real estate agent, and she's like an interior. She just bought the house, and it looks like a model home. And I'm like, girl, I still got boxes from three years ago. For real? Okay. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is not in my forte design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man. Oh, I love that. Magical. They took a bedroom and turned it into a closet. They sure did. I bet it's the one it's sitting this in one. now. Yep, the one that we're in. Because this is, is that our model? It looks like this, it. This is our model. This is our, our model. So wow. they took one, yep. That mm -hmm. room where that yep. closet is, is Lionel's office right yep, now. Yep, that's the one. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I'm like, ooh. Me too. Ooh, uh, that's great. That was phenomenal. Look, yes. that's our closet. And that's the other side, okay. yeah. So, wow. Oh, I love that. I was thinking about that, too, because you can put a, a door on this wall behind us. That was mm. gorgeous. Okay, so we got that's some gorgeous. Bathroom, Jack and Jill bathrooms, double yep. movies. Wow. I need whoever cleaned their house to come clean mine. It is immaculate. <laughs> okay. We did that for the show. Good Lord. Yeah, even with that. Oh, so this is the basement? Yeah, this, this is, is the basement. basement. This is the basement. Uh-huh. Oh, so wow. that basement wow. is fully, fully finished. I want to know who did it. I mean, we talking about smooth ceilings, recessed light. Oh, man, it's gorgeous. Shrimp. They left the door there. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow. I know. That looks great. That okay, Jim. Okay. Wow. Nice flat backyard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. So this one was the uh that's nice. So this one was mm -hmm. five ten. Finished basement, okay. all that started at four sixty five. Though started at four sixty five. So when when we talk about listing a property, when you're talking to sellers, the list price is like the starting line. Okay. The sales price is the finish line. Okay. So you know, for that house, they might have been like, "Oh, well, I want to sell for five hundred. Okay, but the list price is the starting point. You know what I mean, and that's how you know, and and it was cash, so yeah. Oh. Um. So now I'm gonna take a look at the the other six bedroom, which is pending right now. Okay. So when we say pending, it the list price was four eighty five. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it's closing at yet. Okay. Gotcha. All we see is the starting line price. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Uh, buyer finance it fell through agent owner okay so i'm looking for basement this has none no basement on this one mm -hmm. um original list price 475 so she went up 10 that okay so this is what probably happened they went listed it went under contract in two days they probably went under contract because it says original list price four seventy five. They mm -hmm. probably went under contract for four eighty five mm -hmm. because when the appraiser goes to pull up the listing to do the appraisal on it, it's easier to match the price to the listing than if it was like oh four sixty five and it was five ten. Now they got to justify this increase in price. But right. If it said five ten and they're just like okay, we just justify list price. But that one was cash, so it didn't even matter. No mm -hmm. appraisal on this, but that one. But this one's probably financing. So mm -hmm. it's probably financing. It probably is around forty five. They went under contract with probably no closing costs. Let's take a look. Um, is that a nighttime photo. 
Okay. Cute trim. Okay. Wow. Okay. They've done some things. Seriously. That looks very nice. The dining room. Wow. Kitchen. So is same floor plan? Yeah. Yeah. But they closed off the dining room. Ah, okay. To okay. make an, an extra room. Yeah, they closed that off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cute. Okay. Wow. Oh, they they took the, the cabinets up. They went with the hood and <laughs> used shelves. Used shelves instead of cabinets. Yeah. Let me go back. Mm, I don't like that. You don't like that? Mm -mm. I don't like my stuff visible. I know. It looks like one of those like Better Home and Garden magazines. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what this. Yeah, but look, I Jeez. love this fridge, this double oven fridge. But yes, those um, oh my gosh, lights pendants. Yeah, that side is the same for us. Stone fireplace but, over here. The yeah, that's next on my to do list. Uh huh. Wow, it's beautiful. Some owner suite. Mm hmm. Baby room. I just want to know who cleans for these people. I don't oh my gosh. This was just like, for a photo shoot. Jesus. Cute. Oh, that is cute. Oh, my son. Oh, wow. wow. And it's got the little curtain. I love that. Aw. Where is that? Uh, it looked like one of the bedrooms upstairs. Whichever one had, it might be the uh, opposite Jack and Jill because that's the oh thing could be yeah yep, that is, exactly that is awesome over here yeah that's awesome that's the one on this side. no both mm -hmm. the windows on this side. Mm -hmm. toy room gee man we need to go and start selling some houses so we can you know upgrade okay. our <laughs> <laughs> and then they look they did redid their patio floor cute huge backyard very good lot sizes mm -hmm. so let's say 485 ish on that mm -hmm. okay um and then what's active even though it's a five three it's aka the competition right okay gotcha so i like to look to see what's active because if they come out there most likely they're going to look at both if it's in the price range right so we got 465 this is a 53 i'm looking private remarks no good info there basement full unfinished so mm -hmm. similar um original price 465 four days on the market let's see what they look like i love that uh the porch yeah and a deck on the front yep yeah I don't know if I ever sit out in the front, but it look cute from the street. So there's this empty, kind of, you know, like not mm -hmm. as highly decorated mm -mm. as the other one. Different floor plan. Very nice though. Mm -hmm. Cute. That is cute. They do? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure do. Huge owner suite. Wow, yes. it is. Mm -hmm. That was a nice, cute shot. Nice. Laundry room in the owner. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, girls' room. <laughs> <laughs> Boys' room. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yes. Bunk bed not as cool as the other one though. That other one was cool. Oh, now yeah. this is nice. That is, I like that. Mm hmm. Fence backyard, unfinished basement. Okay. So they do have a big yard. So essentially, like these three are kind of like what I'm looking at these. Okay. Three. So now that I and, I, and I see some other stuff going on, but I mean, that really, I, I think this is more applicable to right now what's going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, very similar. And so now that I've pulled it up on FMLS, I'm gonna just leave this open. And then my last stop, stop number four is, uh, oh, back to Georgia MLS, actually. Different okay. matrix. Um, so now I'm gonna go back to Georgia MLS where I, I went to CRS to pull the taxes. Now I'm gonna go mm -hmm. to Cloud CMA uh, to do the CMA. Okay. And um, my profile and all that's already set up on there. So it just makes it easier. Okay, so we're just going to create a new report. CMA. Um, put your client's name. And again, it auto comes up and what it's going to do is it's going to pull out ah, well, typically it'll pull the information from the tax record, but it didn't pull up so we're going to put it in square footage 3964. Bedroom six four. Single family detached. I like the quick and dirty just pull the first 10 see what happens. I'm really looking to pull up what's in the subdivision again. So what we have here is, this is the map, okay? So this is showing, you know, what's around in the area, but I really just kind of want to focus on the neighborhood. Okay. Here. Um, so these red ones have closed, right? Mm -hmm. um, this one, has sold, but it's not checked. So the one, some are checked and some are not checked, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So we're looking for the ones that are checked. Now, let me just look at these addresses real quick. So 510, this one was the one on the slab. Mm -hmm. This was finished basement, unfinished basement. So Mirror Lake, Meridian, okay. So, 510, I want to keep that one. This 365, I'm taking that out. Okay. Um, 400, you can hit details and adjustments and it'll pull up the info. Mm -hmm. So slab, this is on a slab, sold at 400 last year. I don't think that really, really is what I'm looking for. And over here is giving you kind of like averages. So I see 390, I already know 390. This is again, now this is on a basement. This sold last year. I don't know why it sold for so cheap. Hmm. It's just sold in January. Um, Cause it's on a basement. Listen. Maybe they were just looking to get out. They didn't care. That's crazy though, because look, list price was four hundred. Yeah. Well, original list price was three eighty nine. Went up to four hundred. Closed at three ninety, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't like. It. I'm gonna take that one out. I think we could do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what we got over here. So I'm going to uncheck this one because it's not in the neighborhood. I'm going to uncheck these because these are not in the neighborhood. Oops. So I'm really just focusing on the neighborhood. Okay. okay. And let's see. 390, 360, those are slabs. Hmm, 495, 485. So Meridian Pass, is that not on here? It's the one at the top. 5260. Oh. Oh, it is there. Okay, so which one am I missing? 485. Uh, so Hemlock Circle? I think I took that one off. Nope, there's 5485. 
Um, yeah, but hemlock circles. Oh, 45. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I don't see it. I don't see it either. Okay. Mm -hmm. So based on this information, my range over here, we have this is active, but this mm -hmm. one is um this one is on the unfinished basement. Mm -hmm. So competition right now, 465. Over here, we're gonna go into this seller net sheet. So okay. if you hit this drop down, it'll pull all these out. So right mm -hmm. now, if I had to guesstimate, if I had to guesstimate, Hmm. This is a little bit smaller in square footage, smaller in bathrooms, bedrooms. Hmm. In my mind, my price range. So this, this is the part where agents get anxieties because you just have to guess. So mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm just running numbers to see which one feels good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, I need a starting point. And sure. right now, this is the competition, right? Mm -hmm. So it's smaller in square footage. It's a little bit older, unfinished basement, 465. There's nothing else that's on the market in that mm -hmm. you know in the neighborhood that's like that um we got one pending at 485 in my mind i feel like my starting point would be 489 okay, okay. number that's come into my head so if i say 489 you know this is where we're essentially where we're starting. And, and so now that I've seen all these pictures, when I get to the house, I can determine, do I need to say 489 is closer to the top or 489 is closer to the middle or the bottom mm -hmm. based on the condition of the house? I don't know, you know what right. I mean? So now when we go down to expenses, the first expense is gonna be the mortgage payoff. Mm -hmm. And so we got a rough guesstimate of 360. The next thing we're going to do is property tax. So I'm going to go back to the tax and it's, let's say it's June right now. It's pretty much June, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're taking these taxes, 4150, clear, 4150 divided by 12. I just want to know what it is per month. Okay. And if we list the house, let's say we list in June, we close in July, that means you as the owner will be um, responsible for seven months from January to July. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that times seven. So that'll give me 2420. So you'll owe 2420 for the, you know, when we close. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'm going to put on there is real estate. Professional fee. And I put max. Okay. And so you're going to take this 489 times 6%. 489 times 6%. That's 29,340. Okay. So that's the real estate commission. So okay. the seller pays the whole commission, the whole 6%. And then the listing agent will split 3% or whatever they, you know, say mm -hmm. to the other side, but that's going to be the, the maximum fee, right? Okay. Then the next thing I might put on there is seller contribution. Now, I'm, I'm just, I'm just guesstimating based on this range. I'm going to just say maybe 2000, 
let's say for instance they do an inspection Mm -hmm. and something needs to be repaired or let's say you're on a septic and you need to pump it or whatever i like to put a little buffer on there now this is and and i'll put here optional okay because this this could be optional or it could be zero Mm -hmm. i like to go worst case scenario just so they're not like, well, you didn't tell me this, this is mm-hmm. that. <laughs> okay. Right. So based on these numbers, we're roughly going to net about 97,000. So based on my conversation with the sellers, I know that they want to move closer, possibly to the South Carolina side, so they can be mm-hmm. closer to family. So what I'm hearing them say is they want to sell this in order to buy. So depending on you know if they're looking to do a bigger house or a smaller house this should be enough to do be a nice down payment on that house enough Mm -hmm. expenses to move and you know and i'm going to dive more into conversation when i get there before we talk about any numbers because when i get there it might be like yeah we want to move and then we also got two credit cards we want to pay off we want to pay off the car then all that come to play now we got to start adding stuff i'm like okay how much some credit card pay (laughs) right (laughs) right pay off and then because i already got a guesstimate number in my head Mm -hmm. and so when you're going into that conversation you need to know ahead of time, are you in the range, outside the range or whatever? So I had a listing appointment one time. I did the number. She was going to net about 30,000. So I was excited. I was like, yeah, and you're going to walk away with about 30,000. She looked at me and said, if I don't get at least 50, I'm not selling. And I was, I was like, oh. if I would have oh. known that ahead of time, right. I would have said it differently. Yeah, I wouldn't have been like, oh, you know, I'd have been like, well, you know, the the market is what the market is. And right now, Mm -hmm. you know, I know you can walk away with 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but but that that conversation should have been more like, okay, you want 50. What's important about 50,000? Well, I need to do this, this and this. And most people say the number higher than what it really is. Mm -hmm. Right. So I could have been like, well, what if we could get you 40,000? You know, and then she might have been like, oh, okay. So then when I hit her with the 30, 30 something, it wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so a, 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 a lot of conversation has to happen before we get to numbers. So that's what I was going to ask. Is that a like an initial conversation or this is a conversation like around this time after you've done all of this that well, you no. ask, you know, what is it that you would like to walk away with? Well, when I get there, or it could have been in this conversation when we talked. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was asking. It could. Now, you could have said, well, yeah, I need to sell this house because I need to do this, 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 and I need this dollar amount. It could. But with with this conversation, it was like, I'm just looking to move. I'm looking to be closer to family. So it wasn't really dollar number related. But when I come see you in person, I'm going to, I'm going to break that down into, okay, when I first get there and I sit down, with, I'm like, thank you for letting me come. You know, mm-hmm. I really appreciate that. Now, I just want to cover the goals. What I, just, to, just to refresh, our goal is when we last talked, we wanted to be closer to mom and this, that, and the third. You know, is there anything else? Or, you know, and I'm going to dive deeper into that. And I'm going to see if I can pull some numbers out. Okay, mm-hmm. so were you looking to get us, you know, downsize into a smaller house when you move? Or were you looking for something bigger for maybe mom to move into in the future? Mm-hmm. And, and then that can help me determine, okay, if you're looking to go higher, then if I take that, let's say we go to $500,000 house and you want to put, you know, 5% down or whatever, I'm going to start calculating to make sure we got enough based right. on how I look bad. So yeah, I right. would say that is definitely feasible. And you'll have money left over to move. And you'll mm-hmm. have a little left over for, you know, additional savings or whatever else you may want to do and things like that. But mm-hmm. if I know we're short on the money that I might be having a different conversation, like, okay, mm-hmm. well, you know, is, is, is that the budget you feel most comfortable? Do, is there other 401ks or somewhere else? Do you have any other money saved that we could use in addition to this? Mm-hmm. So the more questions you ask, the better that you be prepared to deliver this information in a way that they can swallow it without it being a, you know what I mean? It could yeah. be bad, but you, the more questions you ask, the better prepared you will be to have this conversation. 
Okay. Um, I'm feeling good about these numbers, okay? okay. And so I'm gonna next, I'm gonna customize my report. So I'm gonna hit customize. And the theme, all this is kind of like, they have a default, My, I think mine's still on default. Now, these are the different pages in your report. Okay. Over here are additional pages you could add or take away. So you got the title page. If you click on the eyeball, it'll show you what the title page looks like. So it'll look like this. Mm -hmm. um, cover letter. So, oh, I was like, I don't have a cover letter. I guess I got a cover letter, okay? So there's the cover letter. If I didn't have a cover letter, then I would just hit this and it will go away and go back over here. Okay. Um, agent resume. Do I have a resume? No, no resume in this one. But if I did and I wanted to add it, hit the plus mm -hmm. sign, it'll, it'll go here. So you can okay. add and take away whatever you want your report to look like. Um, I have a map, comparables. When I do the listings, I do the photos plus the other photos. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want you to see all the pictures of those houses on the inside. You know what I mean? Because we're we're talking condition on condition and and you can see the one that was staged the houses that were staged and well decorated versus the one that wasn't wasn't giving you the same ooh and ah feeling even though you know that the the, the staging stuff doesn't or the furniture doesn't stay but it gives you a different right. vibe right um, so do you put money into that i don't to have it staged okay I right. personally don't because in this particular market, every house is, should almost sell. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. prior to, there's been times where, you know, I've had people rearrange some of their furniture in their house or had them take some stuff out or maybe we added a little something. Um, but, you know, the higher end properties, the more you may want to, you know, dive a little deeper into that. No, now, okay. the one that's most important is online, of, not most important, but this is the one why I picked up this estimate, online evaluation analysis. Now, typically it's over here, but I use it so much that it knows to put it over here. Okay. But um, it's online evaluation analysis, and it says, where's my thing? Uh, where is? Where are my comparables? Where is it? It shouldn't be blank. It should say how accurate is this estimate? Let me take it away and add it back. That's weird. Hmm. It, it typically says let me save this one. And I'm going to go back and show you a different one. But it typically says how accurate is estimate and it'll give a percentage mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, so these popped up. So this is saying average uh, price uh, to sale listing list price to sale. So mm -hmm. everybody's selling over closing for more than what they originally listed for. Right. So average list price 453, average close at 475. Everybody's getting over 100%. Mm -hmm. Average three days on the market. Let me customize and see if it'll pop up. I mean, publish. Hmm. Um, so when it publishes, you can, I print the PDF copy and bring it with me. Okay. Usually leave it there with them. Some people want you to email it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a live link that I will email after I've been there. I don't okay. email it before because if I send it to you before and you don't like those numbers, you're going to cancel our appointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing that. <laughs> now, you can send it to them without the seller net sheet on it, but they still may kind of come to their own conclusion. So this is mm -hmm. what the live version looks like. So it has like the agent resume, CMA comps, average price. Let me see if that came up. See, this, so this is how it usually looks. How accurate is this estimate? So maybe there wasn't Zestimates on it or they didn't pick up the Zestimates. Mm -hmm. But typically it'll have this estimate. I'll show you a different one. Um, but all the little, you know, um, same thing that was on the front is also on the side panel. Mm -hmm. It'll have 
the same kind of, you know, net thing. Okay. Go down here and go, you know, click on towards the bottom, or you can go to the home screen. These are just different pages, essentially. That's cool. Um, I like how it's laid out. Yeah. It looks super professional, right? It mm -hmm. does. Um, and then this Easy is easy to navigate too. Exactly. Let me show you a different one. Um, let me show you. Okay. Okay, let's do this, Sharon. So this is the PDF version. So this is the cover page, map of listings, kind of what we just looked at. Right. Um, a summary of it, what's sold under contract and active, the different listings. So this is how they, you can see what it looks like on the inside. Mm -hmm. So sometimes where they're like, Oh yeah, I know that house. Okay, well let's look at it though and see how it compares to your house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know you saw the outside, but <laughs> inside to inside. Now this yeah. one, I saw how the other one was all bright and open. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got this one that's a little more like blah. Closed in. Yeah. Right. You know, then you got this one, lots of verbiage, beautiful decor. You know what I'm saying? This, mm -hmm that's why they got different prices you know i know it's you know they're like but they got the same bedroom it's the same this that okay but does it does it feel the same when they walk in right. <laughs> yeah you know? so do you go through this on your computer so they can see the color and everything's no, beautiful I, I print them i print it color it's in a color, okay lot, it's a lot of pages and yep i print it because okay. i want them to keep it yeah because if i get there and i can't log in i'm i'm not that tech savvy <laughs> right, I got you. I'm gotcha. on paper. I don't have like an <laughs> iPad. And not. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so if you fancy like that, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one I was talking about, online evaluation. How accurate are the Zestimates? So Zestimates are very up to almost 20%. Mm -hmm. So sold price was 285. Zestimates said it was 296. So price, uh, the, the price 242 estimates at 195. Mm -hmm. So you see how the estimates are very, so, so in that particular case, if they were to be like, um, this was Charles. So let me see if they were to say, let me run through what the estimate said. Um, trying to see what they're saying but anyway if theirs was off then i have some ammo to say oh well you know based on this you can see that the zestimates are not accurate so we can't mm -hmm. go by that right right now sold property like how much are they listing for what they're selling for over market value and i had a suggested list price and then the net breakdown okay and then um, this is intelligent pricing. So this is, so you're gonna have sellers that say, well, I'd rather, can I just list at 500 and work my way down? No, yeah. you cannot. Let me tell you why. Cause when you list at market value, your house is in front of 60% of the buyers that can buy your house. Mm -hmm. Now, if we priced it too high, a little bit higher, now we're only in front of 30%. Gotcha. We want your house in front of 60% so that they fight for it and drive the price up. The starting mm -hmm. line is not the finish line. Okay. So, and I've had sellers, I used to be a weaker agent back then and they, and I'm like, all right, we'll negotiate it down. And then we end up being on the market forever. And then mm -hmm. we end up having to negotiate it so far down. We're below where I said start in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I, I tell them this, if they keep giving me pushback, I'm like, listen, how about we do this? Let me do it my way for, for a week. Just give me mm -hmm. one. And if I can't get you, you don't have to agree to any contract until you see that on paper, the numbers you want, mm -hmm. then we can move forward. If that, that's, if I can't bring you an offer that hits that 500 mark for you, then, then we'll try it your way. We'll list it higher and negotiate down. You know that don't make sense though, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but as long as you say we'll do it your way, they're like, okay. And then they just keep on moving. Okay. 
And then a curb appeal checklist. Some of this moving checklist. I don't even use all this. I don't know why it's on here. Listing paperwork. God, I don't do none of this. I usually would have deleted all those pages out. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if I had to guesstimate, I would stay starting at 489 and then mm -hmm. working our way up, just depending when I get to the house to see what the house looks like. How does it compare? Does it look like a model home or does it look a little more vacant? Or there's been times where hoarders is real. Like, <laughs> I believe, <laughs> I've seen I believe stuff, it. And I've seen hoarder of animals, mm. hoarder of stuff and animals. Mm. Uh, so you did, when you get out there in the streets, you'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you just have to, so the CMA, the market analysis is just a guesstimate. Mm -hmm. And then when you get there, then you just adjust in your head and then you got to gear, you got to know how to have the conversation so you can get down the right path to make sure, you know, because it may, sometimes it's not in their best interest to sell. Right. And, you know, if they're negative on the numbers and, you know, is and they're not going to be able to purchase another hat. Maybe it's maybe we don't sell. You know, but mm -hmm. for the most time, most most part is always a good idea to sell. <laughs> yeah, especially in this market with these numbers. Yeah. So, yeah. so say you know, for example, you you know, you say you come in, you've got the so you come to our house, you know, it's forty nine nine is what you're thinking. You come in and the condition is not, you know, what you expected for as as you looked at the other comps. How do you handle that type of conversation? You know, would you say, okay, based on what I'm seeing, we probably, you know, price your house at, you know, say four four seventy or something. How do you how do you handle that? Well, so since I've already printed those pages, I would kind of have a conversation like, because I'm gonna go through the listings first, right. and then I'm gonna say, you know, the, now if we can, you know, get the condition up to this, or we can kind right. of the things then we can, we can definitely get here. Or what we can do is, you know, we can list a little bit lower and then drive. Then I might say that might is our end goal where we're, we're looking to finish at 489 right. and then these would be your numbers. So I might have to have that conversation backwards instead of saying that's the starting line. That might be the finish line right. And, right. and then say, okay, well, you know, cause sometimes people need to do like painting or updates or mm -hmm. things like that. And so, and I always want to give people options. I can say, okay, well, what we can do is if you want to sell it as is, then we could probably sell it for this price. So somebody mm -hmm. will have a chance to come in and kind of do what they want to do to it. Or, you know, we can get a couple contractors in, get a couple of quotes and see what it would take to paint. Like one of my listings had all different color paints in every different room mm -hmm. and stuff. And we're like, ooh. We need to just paint this whole house one color, okay, and then take up all this carpet that was, you know, I think it was like forest green or something. Oh, gosh. All the carpet, so we did paint and carpet, and it was a much easier sell for a higher price, but mm -hmm. they had time, and, you know, we had good relationships with contractors to where we could get the work done, and it worked out, and then there's sometimes where they just, they can't, you know, they're like, whatever, just sell it as is, I don't want to be bothered. So, right. you know, that, that might introduce, okay, well, we could do, let me get some options. We could do Keller offers mm -hmm. where I can get you cash offers from investors in 72 hours. Or, and, and if you don't like any of those, we can put it on the market and see if we can get some other investors or possibly some other um, people that want to buy and, and put a little TLC in their home. There's lots of people out there that are contractors that do work on their own home. So they'll see a house that need paint flooring and all that and they don't care about none of that because they could do that in the weekend you know while yeah. you're like oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you okay. never know you know one thing about real estate is you got to hold your feelings in your opinions in because you know you never know their brother might be an electrician and they don't care that none, all this electrical work don't work <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so ask a lot of questions Okay. okay. Do you all have, um, do you provide like prompts or, or questions that you could possibly ask in certain situations? What do you mean? Like so like, for example, when the initial, you know, listing meeting, 
you know, remember, make sure you ask these questions or before you complete the comp, when you are meeting them for the first time and you're getting this information, make sure you include this or make sure you ask this question. Or yeah, if yeah. you walk in the house and it's, you know, you have, you know, the, your comp price there or your suggested, you know, list price and you walk in and it's like, it's a horror movie. Some questions or some things that you could possibly say, say, you know, that doesn't sound insensitive, but doesn't sound like you are throwing your opinions at them, um, but just a way to have that conversation. I like to use options. Yeah. I give people options all the time. Right. So, so, well, so to answer your question, yes and no. For the initial conversation, I do have yes. So, mm -hmm. this, oh, let me share my screen so you can see it better. Um, so this seller lead sheet mm -hmm. is my essentially my initial conversation. Get their info right. and then get this information. And then I'm going to do the, the CMA. Right. And then once I do the CMA and then I get to the house, it's it usually typically goes one or two ways. Either the house looks similar to all the other houses in the neighborhood mm -hmm. or doesn't. Gotcha. <laughs> and so there's not really like a questionnaire after that. It's kind of, you got to feel the vibe of the per it, it, it's because every scenario is different. Right. Yeah. So it really depends on why they were selling, if they live there or if they don't live in the house, that also can change the process. Right. Um, but essentially my goal when I get there is to get them to sign that listing agreement. Yeah. Let me sell that house, whichever way it is, whether it's cash offers listed, um, mm -hmm. both, or, you know, there's pretty much only two options. Right, right, right. I got you. I'm sorry. I'm a teacher. So I have that. I know. Brain sometimes, you know, I have, to... <laughs> so and I have, I have coworkers who don't know how to talk to people. So that's why I'm like, do you have suggestions on how you can say certain things? So you're not, you know, yes. so yes, that's going to come with script and dialogue practice. Gotcha. Okay. And I was telling your husband, I sent them, send her the link to this, the, the morning stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Just, just jump on. Don't matter if you're licensed, just jump on. And the middle one is script practice. Mm -hmm. That script and dialogue practice. It, Cause it, it's, it's kind of like your, it's kind of like you're you're memorizing like a script like an actress, mm -hmm. but it but it's improv at the same time. <laughs> right. right. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, so it may not, it might start off like it did on that paper, but it might go a whole different direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Essentially, it's like listening to the scripts and then you know, practicing them. And eventually you'll start to just remember things because most of the time it boils down to a handful of objections. Right. With sellers and or buyers. Right. So with sellers, a com objection most of the time is commission. Mm -hmm. How much do you charge? Okay, well, how many, you have to have like four or five different ways to battle that conversation, depending on who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, another thing might be with the, with the list price. I want to list up here, but, you know, we really need to be here. You got to have three or four different ways to handle that. So when you engage in the daily script practice, because they do it Monday through Friday, just 30 minutes. And then we do them Mondays at nine and Thursday nights at six. It's just agents having conversations that, especially when you're out having conversations with real people, yeah. you bring it back and be like, you know, with buyers, oh, I want to buy a house, but I'm working on your my credit. Right. And so what would you say? So um, what is your, like, have you, how are you going about working on your creative base? But not in that way, but um, what are your plan? Have you laid out a plan? What is your plan from getting to where you are right now to home ownership? Right. Is, and, and most agents, that's their first question. Yeah. My first question is, what's your credit score? Okay. 
because it might be good enough to buy. Yeah, that's a good one. Working on what are we working? (laughs) Yeah, that's true because sometimes people think that they can't afford it or they won't get approved when they actually will. So yeah, yeah, that is a great first question. Exactly. And so the Mm -hmm. thing is, is they're like, oh, well, my credit score is a six seventy, and I'm trying to get to a seven hundred for what? Right. We, we, let's go buy this house and stop playing. Yeah. It's going to make no lick of difference between that and that. Right. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah. so having those, those practicing, having these conversations will help you get through, I guess, trying to answer your question, how, what questions to ask. The mm-hmm. more you hear it, the more you hear conversations, the more you know what to say and when to say it. Yeah. So in a situation like that, so say the credit score is 670 or they're they're saying you know okay I need these I don't have a decent car but I want to buy a house and this and other would you then say okay one thing you really don't want to do while we're going through this process is buy a car or buy do heavy spending on your credit card or you know do you have those conversations with them yes and no I don't okay I I don't typically say you don't need to do something right I'll say you have choice here. Right. <laughs> if you buy that car, that's a debt. That's right. less house or no house that you can buy. Yeah. Uh, if you buy the house first, that doesn't make no effect on whether or not you can buy that car because by the time right. you buy the house and it hit your credit report, you'd be riding your car and pay two payments already. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if I'm like, how long you been without the car? Can you like, is it feasible? If you yeah. Pay- you know, so I would just give them the options and let them know, you know, these are your options and then you yeah. can choose what's best for you. And I've had people like my car literally just broke down and and, and we're out there like looking at houses. Yeah, they have to buy a car. And yeah. so that decreases how much house they can buy. Or right. there's, uh, one guy we had, he had to, we had him rent a car for like three or four weeks. Oh, wow. OK. To close it. And I was like, I'm so sorry you wrecked your car. But you cannot buy. If you want this house, <laughs> you can't buy that car. I right. Rent, you better Uber, Lyft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you do, rent a car, but you cannot purchase any. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. But back to, the, I guess, the, the one question we we're talking about, you know, with the credit score, they say, hey, my credit score is 670. You're like, well, you know, you do your approach of, you know, this is this a, that's a good credit score to go out and look at the house. Can I set you up with talking with a, a, a financial? Person. I wouldn't say it like that, because mm-hmm. if you say "can I," that's it, 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 essentially I stay away from yes or no questions. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. If that fifty-fifty chance, they probably gonna say more than likely they're gonna say no. People just mm-hmm. default to say no when you walk into the store and they're like, do you, "Hey, welcome. Do you need any help?" You say no. Yes. But you might. But you just say right. no. Can I? Right. No, you ain't got it. No, right. is like a default answer. So. But- you want them to say no, don't ask them yes or no questions. So if they were to say, oh, I have a 670, I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. You could buy a house at a 580, 640 mm-hmm. and above, you you get a better credit score and you qualify for more programs. So why don't we do this? Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'll have the lender call you and mm-hmm. they can tell you what you qualify for right now, what your interest rates would be. And then you can ask them, hey, if I bump my credit score up to this, what difference would it make? And the lender will right. say, no, it ain't going to make no difference. Sometimes they don't want to hear it from me, which is fine. Right. My, that ain't my forte. I do the house. Right. Exactly. Okay? exactly. And so I'm going to ask them, when is, what's easiest? When is it good for my lender to call you during the day or is evening better or weekends? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying can I have my lender call you. Right. I'm right. The easiest. What's good for you? Daytime, yeah. evening, weekend. <laughs> You're right. Okay. And so they yeah, got to make sense. Know, it's going to be hard for them to turn around and say, "Well, no." Mm-hmm. And then if they say, "Well, I no, I don't want it," then there's another objection. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, since the credit score is great, what else do you think is holding you back? Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't got no money. Well, you got a good enough credit score. You don't really need the money. Right, right. You, you can qualify for down payment assistance programs right now. Mm-hmm. Or how about I turn you into a cash buyer and we do rent to own? Mm-hmm. Right? Give you plenty of time to work on. You can get up to a thousand if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but if yeah. that makes you feel good, let's make you a cash buyer, do rent to own, and still get you in your house that you want. Right. Okay. So that's good. Closer to South Carolina by your mom and your family. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know that motivation. You just throw it in. 
little yeah. sprinkles here and there because then that takes them back to why they're doing this. Right. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Good deal. Yeah. Whoa. So when when can I get when can we get access to that um that, that sheet? Oh, okay. So let me go ahead and um I'm gonna stop this recording. I'm gonna save it. Do you want it to stop?